Chapter 33 Before I got knocked the fuck out by enemy number one, I heard Bless shout, No! at the top of her lungs. My world went dark. I awoke, lying on the floor somewhere, something shining on either side of me, under a pale blue light that permeated everything. My head was wrapped in a towel, my body in blankets. I couldn't feel my forehead. I was cold, maybe on ice, at the morgue, in a drawer in the glue factory. Then my sense of smell informed me. Leather, oil, tobacco, the shed, East Oakland, the window, the shining, all of Freddy's tools lying around me. I tried to turn my head and felt my skull break into a thousand pieces of stabbing pain. I began to moan. Then I felt a rush of air beside me. A voice told me, don't move. I was happy to acquiesce. The pain was terrific. I know you're in a lot of pain, boo, Freddy said in his softest, sweetest voice. But don't you worry. I'm going to take care of you. Thank God, I whispered. He adjusted the wrap on my head and readjusted my position to my liking. He offered me some Dr. Pepper and corn puffs, which were glowing orange in the pale blue light. Everything was going to be all right. One could only hope. Later, I know not when, I got up, then fell back down, then got up again slowly. I was pretty woozy, but I could manage. I went outside and found Freddy working under a car like usual. I sat down cross-legged and asked him about Bless. What had become of her? He kept on with his work, tightening something here, cranking something there, headlamp affixed to head, overall stained with oil, eyes squinting into the automotive intestines there above him. Finally, he got out from under the car and looked me over. Hey, it's the heavyweight champ. Yeah, yeah, the champ, sure. Now, what about my sister? She'll be okay, he said. What does that mean? I never could understand how a man could leave matters of such significance with a comment so immaterial and nonchalant. I pressed for more. Sucking in some Dr. Pepper and polishing some chrome, Freddy told me. I never knew Everett to go so far. Too far. He won't go so far. Never again. When I come in there and seen you on the ground, knocked out, and seen Bless sitting there beside you, well, it was too much to take, you know. I won't never let anything happen to you. He shook his head. Damn. He went too far, too far. Hearing Freddy's account of the situation, I could breathe easy. My sister was okay. It took a few days to clear my head. In the meantime, Freddy took care of me any way he knew how. Lots of junk food and scratchers and simple conversations. Soon I would discover our antagonist, Everett, was deceased. Freddy had destroyed the man, his friend. He might not cry, but his heart was heavy. I felt bad for him. I gathered up all his tools and started organizing the different size ratchet sets and made a home for all the orange extension cords and soldering irons and screwdrivers and car and motorcycle parts everywhere. Some could relocate either on the wall or in one of many toolboxes, or just out of the way so there was room to walk around and for both of us to lie down unimpeded.